Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guess was brain dead for 11 hours, went to heaven, sent back with a message from heaven. We have a Hebrew word. It's called besheret. It means it's meant to be. I tell you, it is besheret that you be watching right now. Amen. Now, my guest, uh, I've just gotten to, to really know over the last day, he's a retired pilot. Uh, you put in a lot of hours flying. How many hours? Well, just over 20,000. Just over 20,000. Uh, he's not, he was not a believer in the Messiah. His wife was a believer. Is it fair to say that your God was things, T-H-I-N-G-S? Yes, Sid, and I'm ashamed to admit it. I mean, I lived what I thought was the quintessential American Canadian dream. Uh, of a successful career, successful businesses. And yet, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd have this yearning inside of me. And I foolishly interpreted that as meaning I needed a faster plane, a bigger car, a larger boat. Yeah, but one day, again, he's his own God, so to speak. He wakes up and something unusual. His arms and his legs are numb. He gets diagnosed with a disease, frankly, I've never heard. It's, is it a Guillain uh, Barre? It's Guillain Barre. Guillain, close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, and if I understand this right, this is life threatening, and you could end up paralyzed, but actually, if you don't get treatment right away, which you did not, uh, what, 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 what did they tell you to expect? Well, it's uh, often fatal. And Guillain-Barre is the deterioration of the myelin sheath on your brainstem. And it's similar to if you strip the insulation from an electrical cord and all the signals from your brain become pain and interrupted. And I went from being a guy that flew jets and raced cars to someone completely dependent on nurses and my wife, who is a nurse, for my care. You to told me the pain was so bad that you had, pro you had pain when you blinked your eyebrow. I eyebrows. actually trained myself to blink one eye at a time. Because That's of the pain? Every, every blink of my eye was pain, not just in my eyes, but throughout my whole body. My whole uh, nervous system had been interrupted by this incredible, debilitating disease. And all of a sudden, the pain gets so bad that you take a whole bottle of pain medicine. I mean, but it, didn't you realize that could be fatal? You know, Sid, it was a gradual thing. And yet, to give me some semblance of normalcy, some ability to sleep two or three hours a night, I began to take more of the medication than I should have. And. And I was trying to get up the, the, the energy to get out of the truck and inspect the field that I was trying to sell. And I saw a vial of prescription medication. I should have known. 
All I was consumed with was stopping the pain. As I, I took the last of the medication that evening, and I'm facing the setting sun for some reason, I didn't plan it that way. All of a sudden, my feet began to burn as though they were in fire. My hands and fingertips started to burn. And as that, as that burning sensation made its way up my body and in my arms toward my chest, I knew that I had done something truly catastrophic. And it was then that I said the first three of the six words that I believe are responsible for me being here today, along with the prayers of my family. And in that last instant in my consciousness, I looked at the setting sun and I raised my hand and I remember it was shaking violently. I cried out, God, God forgive me. Forgive me. I cried out from a part of me that I didn't even know existed. Not out of fear. I'd faced death a couple of times as a pilot. Never flinched. But I had this overwhelming sense in those last nanoseconds of my life that I had wasted this beautiful life that the Creator had given me. And I had never honored Him for that life. And I was just trying to express my sorrow for not having led a better life. After that prayer, which is half of the prayer that got you back, what do you remember? And suddenly I became aware that the horrific pain that I had endured for all those years since the onslaught of the Guillain-Barre was gone. I felt more alive than I had ever felt before. And the pain was gone. I felt so great, I slid out of the truck. I walk about 15 feet away and I'm feeling as though a heavy, wet overcoat has been taken off from me, and all the pain has gone with it. And then I look back at the truck, and there's someone in my truck, and I'm absolutely enraged. Who would dare get in my truck? And not only that, he's sleeping on the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> the, the moment when I realized that the guy in the truck was me, <laughs> was truly earth shattering. The next thing that happened, you're flying, but there's no airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I'm saving on fuel. <laughs> <laughs> but I begin to rise. I can look through the rear window of the truck and see my body slope over the wheel. I'm over the truck, I can look down in the bed of the truck, Sid, and see my toolbox. And being a, a former pilot, I'm a good judge of altitude. And, and I'm at suddenly 100 feet, 200 feet, I'm drifting slowly backwards, and I'm rising. I'm rising, and I am terrified. I can look out over the countryside. I'll tell I, you what, hold that thought. <laughs> he finds himself in a very unusual place almost a crossroads between heaven and hell. When we come back, we'll find out what he did about it. Hell was actually, he actually heard hell and demons calling him by his name. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and get the Heaven Package, which includes James Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. This entire Heaven Package includes 17 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. You will receive James D. Woodford brand new powerful book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey. Through this book, you will read about his first-hand experience with heaven, angels, and the afterlife. Encounter the glories of heaven and the stunning reality of the unseen world. Understand what it's like to hug an angel. Encounter the chilling realities of hell and the sights, sounds, and sensations of heaven. You will also receive Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, and his two-part audio CD, Life After Death. 
Together they include testimonies of 17 people who have given amazingly similar accounts of their experiences with the afterlife. Through the book and two-part audio CD, you will understand what happens the moment a person dies, learn about God's tunnel of light, hear powerful testimonies like Bill Weiss, who encountered both the horrors of hell and the bliss of heaven. Read and hear first-hand accounts about the awesome beauty of Jesus, full of overpowering love and compassion. Gain faith to believe God for your own healing as you understand that God has a body parts room in heaven where miracles are waiting to be accessed. Take a tour of God's heavenly library with volumes of books that contain the accounts of each person's life. Learn how your prayers are converted into visible fire and rivers that ascend to heaven. Don't miss out on getting The Heaven Package, which includes James Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. The entire package includes 17 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9478 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Well, our people are on the edge of their seat right now. So you start going up, and it sounds, I've heard this story from others before, sort of like a tunnel you're going through. What is this? When I got to about 1,200 feet, I tilted my head back, and this beautiful golden circle appeared in the sky. And then the center filled with gold. It opened, and suddenly it was as though I had put all the thrusters on the jet engines. I went zipping into this tunnel of light, which I'm sure many yes. people have heard of. And, and I'm traveling at tremendous speed. I'm leaning back at about 45 degrees. I have incredible uh, uh, sensation of speed. But typically, you feel the wind in your face. There was no wind, and there was no rushing noise of, of the sound of travel, and no jet engines, <laughs> and, uh, and tremendous speed, I bet. You know, I'm guessing Mach 1, possibly. And within a, sh a very quick period of time, I, I recognize that there's a, a brilliant light at the end of this tunnel. I come to it. It's covered in mist. I step out because I feel the tunnel closing behind me. I put my foot down. The mist cleared. I look down, and I can't believe it. I am standing on the most incredible green grass you could ever imagine. I now know where the saying comes from. The grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> I, You're I, talking about heaven. But I've been told the colors, are, oh. it's greener than any green we have here. If we have a spectrum of colors on earth, heaven has 10,000 times 10,000 more. It is a feast for the eyes. Okay, but then you see some darkness. I, I look up from that beautiful grass that radiated light from underneath my feet, and there's as though a dividing line, a median, has been drawn in front of me. To the right, there's this beautiful mist-colored field. Uh, the mist is laying over it. We pilots call it ground effect. There's beautiful flowers showing through it. But then to the left of that line, Sid, it was as, uh, as so different because that beautiful green grass went from green to brown, to scorched, to black, and then dropped off in a crevasse. And I stepped forward and looked down into this cold black blackness. And then I saw something like a dim light at the bottom, like a light of fire, red fire. And suddenly I heard the strangest sound, like two massive iron doors opening and screeching on hinges that had not been used in a long time. And suddenly emerging from those doors was the most hideous creature you could ever imagine. Hollywood could never duplicate what I saw. So I'm looking, I can't believe, I see this thing coming out and suddenly I'm assailed by this horrific smell that comes out of that pit, an odor of death and decay and of things long dead, things that should never see the light of day. 
and it gazed up at me. And when its fiery eyes looked at me, it started to make its way up the wall of that pit. But its body, Sid, was formed of like a rolling mass of dark cloud with a face on it. And I heard the most horrific things. Pe something, something screaming within the body of this creature. And then what absolutely horrified me was I heard my name, my name being called. This creature knew me. It knew me. And it was coming for me. And I was terrified. I mean, I'd love to tell you I stood there and wanted to do battle. I was terrified. And it reared up out of that pit over me. And the most hideous face imaginable, massive in its size, snarled at me. And there was this feeling of, uh, of uh, an anticipation of glee that it couldn't wait to get its claws on me. And I was so horrified, I turned from the darkness toward the light. We are creatures of the light. And I automatically turned toward the light. And when I did, I sensed this creature, its breath on the back of my neck, the stench of its breath, and I felt a sharp claw move down my back. And it was at, at that point, remember I said, there are six words and the prayers of my family that make it possible for me mm -hmm. to be here today. And the first three words I cried out in the truck, God forgive me. In my absolute terror, and I had no reason to expect any help from God, I turned myself toward that mist with that creature breathing up my back, and I lifted both hands and I cried out, God help me, help me. And Sid instantly, Three stars appeared in that mist, like distant points of light, but coming rapidly toward me. And I focused on them to keep my mind off what was snarling behind me, because I could hear the saliva from its jaws dropping on the ground behind me. And I concentrated on those lights. They came so rapidly, Sid, incredible speed. My pilot instincts took over. I was afraid they were going to make too fast a landing. <laughs> But they did a beautiful job. They took form. They were angels. As they approached me, this beautiful light flooded over me, went beyond me and struck that creature. And when the light of the angel struck the creature, it scrambled back down in that hole like a rat running for cover. God had heard the cry of someone that had never turned to him in his life. When we come back, I want Jim to share about what Jesus, as well as the angels have, transferable, sticky love. I've never heard about sticky love. Have you? We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. The Supernatural knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISM podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, there is so much that this man experienced but when I was reading about your experience, I was reading the chapter on sticky love. Tell me about that. Sticky love of God. Yeah. The angels came forward and, and, I, and they spoke to me through thought transference. And as they and it put their wing around me and held me close, I felt so safe and protected. And, and I reached out to touch the angel's arm. And Sid, when I did, I felt I had been impolite in doing that. And so I pulled my hand back. And when I did, the light of the angel's body clung to my hand till I got it back about six to 10 inches and then let go and went into its body. And that's why I tell people every chance I get, the love of God is sticky. It <laughs> wants to cling to you. And, and you told me, you told me that God was in process of replacing all your selfishness, all your greed, all your lust 
for love. Explain that. I don't think a human soul, a soul or spirit can go through this experience and not be profoundly changed. And I feel as though I have been truly born again. Not only have I come back from the grave, my soul has come back from despair. My spirit has found God again. And I will be eternally grateful. Tell me about the hall of knowledge. Heaven, you have to suspend your all that you've been taught about physics and gravity and time and linear space and spatial references, they simply do not exist in heaven. But I was shown the holy city. I mean, these incredible buildings of light, not hewn from stone, Sid, but hewn from blocks of light that exuded this warmth and love. And I saw the halls of knowledge, the halls of music, the halls of learning, the halls of of everything that you wanted to learn about the mysteries of God. Well, and then they way. showed me the nursery. Hmm. The nursery said. I think it speaks to the compassion of our God that little souls that are aborted, God gathers their spirit back and they're raised in the nursery in heaven. Hmm. Tell me about the size of your book of life. I'm ashamed to talk about it, uh, but in the Hall of Records, they keep a record of everything that you've done in and with your life. And it's not to create an I gotcha moment. It's for when you are shown the book of your life. And when they pulled, the angel pulled mine out of his robe and opened it for Jesus to read, I was absolutely shamed and mortified that all I had to show for a life lived that I thought was the ultimate in success was this small, thin book, no bigger than a, a, a diner, roadside diner menu. And, and I was ashamed that that's all. I should have, with all the resources and the time that I had, I should have had a book as thick as a Bible filled with all the goods, all the good deeds that I could have done. You know, as Charles Dickens said in his novel, mankind should have been my business. And instead, I was only involved in my self-ego. Mm. I am determined now that if I have the opportunity to go back again, to do everything good I can so that when Jesus reads the book of my life again, he's going to need three angels and a forklift to open it. <laughs> now, you've got to, you've got to tell me, when you looked in the eyes of Jesus, what did you see? It was the apex of everything that happened to me. Because when his eyes locked on mine, and he smiled at me, Sid, Jesus smiled at me. But when I looked into those eyes of gray and green and blue, I was lost in eternity. Because in those eyes, I saw sadness for the way I had lived my life. I saw sadness for the way we, as mankind, have rejected his Father's message. But I saw incredible love for me, for me someone that deserved none, nothing for me. And, and I also saw mixed in with that love in the eyes of Jesus, forgiveness for me, forgiveness for the life that I had lived and a chance to do it again. I am eternally grateful. My life, our lives, Lorraine's life and mine are now his. Let me tell you a couple of things that you need to know. While all this is going on, his wife and family are praying, and he sees it. He can see them praying. He comes back, and guess what happened to his incurable illness? Went out the window. Have you ever wondered what heaven is truly like? Do you know someone who questions life after death? Now you can know the testimonies of 17 people who experienced life after death. 
each sharing in glorious detail what happens when we depart earth and what heaven is truly like. Call now and get the Heaven Package, which includes James Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. This entire Heaven Package includes 17 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. You will receive James D. Woodford brand new powerful book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey. Through this book, you will read about his firsthand experience with heaven, angels, and the afterlife. Encounter the glories of heaven and the stunning reality of the unseen world. Understand what it's like to hug an angel. Encounter the chilling realities of hell and the sights, sounds, and sensations of heaven. You will also receive Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, and his two-part audio CD, Life After Death. Together they include testimonies of 17 people who have given amazingly similar accounts of their experiences with the afterlife. Through the book and two-part audio CD, you will understand what happens the moment a person dies, learn about God's tunnel of light, hear powerful testimonies like Bill Weiss, I was being pulled up this tunnel, and suddenly this bright light appeared. I knew immediately who it was. I said, Jesus, and he said, I am. And when he said, I am, I collapsed at his feet. Read and hear first-hand accounts about the awesome beauty of Jesus, full of overpowering love and compassion. Gain faith to believe God for your own healing as you understand that God has a body parts room in heaven where miracles are waiting to be accessed. Take a tour of God's heavenly library with volumes of books that contain the accounts of each person's life. Learn how your prayers are converted into visible fire and rivers that ascend to heaven. Hear the moving stories of family reunions in heaven. Not only my grandmother Mary was there, but other family members that had accepted Jesus Christ or the Messiah as Lord and Savior, they were there. Don't miss out on getting The Heaven Package, which includes James Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. The entire package includes 17 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9478 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Mark Taylor. And I'm Mary Colbert. Join us on It's Supernatural as we share how God supernaturally used ordinary people like us to help shape the presidential election. And wait till you hear what is coming next.